crucified, my Lord. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Welcome to the Lexden Passion from Lexden, a suburb of Colchester in Essex. The Passion is a telling of the story of Jesus' last days leading up to his crucifixion. And various people from the church and from the community in Lexden are going to tell you scenes from that story which has been put together and adapted by the Reverend Maggie Whiteman. Lexden is actually uh, originally a village and one of the oldest parts of this uh, oldest recorded town in Britain. And so there were people living in Lexden at the time of the events we are going to tell you about over the next half hour. The word passion comes from a Latin word for suffering. Many of us this year have learnt new things, I'm afraid, about suffering, but we've also learned about hope. And so we share this story today so that you might come to know something of this story and the story of what happened on that first Easter Sunday. Because that's a story that has given us hope across this year. In the twilight hours, Caiaphas paces the courtyard trying to figure out what to do with the problem that is Jesus of Nazareth. The itinerant preacher has been a thorn in the side of the authorities for the last three years, always challenging the law and stirring up the people's emotions through his so-called signs. Caiaphas has enough to deal with, trying to keep the Romans sweet, especially with so many people coming to Jerusalem for the Passover. It's rumoured that Jesus too is on his way. The chief priest has spies everywhere, but what he needs to do is turn one of Jesus' followers into an ally, someone who is disillusioned enough to betray him. Shouldn't be too difficult. I can't believe what's happening. It all started near the Mount of Olives when Jesus sent two of us to bring him a colt that had never been ridden before. We were a little perturbed, but in his usual way, Jesus told us not to worry. All the two had to say was that the Lord needs it. Off they went, and on their return, cloaks were spread across the colt's back, and Jesus rode it into the city. Crowds had gathered, and as Jesus progressed, they threw cloaks and leafy branches in front of him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! As he came within the shadow of the temple, I thought Jesus might be weeping, but as he entered the courtyard, his sorrow turned to anger. He overturned the tables of those who were trading, shouting, My house is a place of prayer, not a place of commerce where people are cheated and misled. You are making it a den of thieves.
So many people have come forward for healing and to listen to my teaching, to be restored to wholeness. Of course, the authorities continually question my authority. They just don't get it. So tied up in their rules and regulations and not opening their hearts to the Father. They walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect and have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honour at the banquets. For the sake of appearances, they say long prayers and make sure everyone knows how much they donate to the temple coffers. Just look at that poor widow. She has put in more than any of them as she has given all she had to live on. It was wonderful to welcome Jesus again to our home and to share time with him and his followers. An incredible thing happened. My sister Mary took a jar of costly perfume, anointed our Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. The perfume filled the air. It was as if she was aware of something we knew nothing about. That sourpuss Judas started complaining immediately, claiming that the perfume could have been sold in aid of the poor. I'm sure he has an ulterior motive. Then Jesus replied with words that sent a shudder down my spine. Leave her alone, Judas. She bought the perfume so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Enough. I've had enough. I have waited patiently for a sign that, that he is the one we're waiting for. But nothing. Oh yes, there's been teaching and miraculous signs, but nothing to suggest defeat of the Romans. I know the authorities are after him. I wonder how much reward I might receive for handing him over. It'll have to be when there are no crowds around. Perhaps when everyone is preparing for the Passover. A nice quiet spot where I can get near to Jesus and single him out. Yes, a deal with Caiaphas. That's the way forward. I'm not sure what it all means, but what an amazing evening we have had. It started with the strangest of suppers. Jesus insisted on washing our feet. 
a job for the lowliest of servants. He insisted that if we did not let him do it, then we would have no share in him. Of course, Peter reacted in his usual over-the-top way, insisting that Jesus should wash his head and his hands as well. Then followed the usual meal, but the way Jesus broke the bread, blessed it, and then blessed the wine, had something deeply significant about it. It was as if he were trying to tell us something. He paid particular attention to Judas, saying to him, do quickly what you are going to do. As holder of the common purse, we assumed Judas was off to buy provisions for the forthcoming festival. Continuing to teach us, Jesus gave us a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. He then became restless and asked us to go with him to Gethsemane to enjoy the silence and pray. My heart is full of love and sorrow for my disciples. They will understand one day, but not until I have endured death. Peter swears such allegiance that even he will betray me. My humanity prays for this cup to pass from me, but I know that my Father's will, and therefore my will, is the redemption of the world. There will be pain, torture and death before the coming of hope, glory and everlasting life. Here they come, Judas with the priests and guards. What is it with these people? Never satisfied. We know they hate us, but when it suits them, they declare they have no king but Caesar. This Jesus is just a scapegoat. They fear his influence on the ordinary people. I've questioned him, and can find no fault. But there's something about him that both disturbs and fascinates me. Their Passover tradition says I can release a prisoner. Let them decide. Jesus or Barabbas, it makes little difference to me. Foregone conclusion, really. For us 
My son, my beautiful son, what have they done to you? Beaten and battered, mocked and dressed in kingly robes with a crown of thorns, carrying your own cross, you fall and fall again and they drag a stranger from the crowd to carry your cross to the place of execution. I do not understand. My heart is filled with pain. Why do you have to do this? What is the purpose? All sacred gifts surrounded by crown of piercing thorn. O bleeding heaven so wounded, so shamed and poor to Oh, 
The soldiers cast lots of his clothing as he hangs with a criminal either side of him. One of them mocks him. Are you not the Messiah? Save us in yourself. But the other turns for him. Don't you fear God? The man is innocent. We are not. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. With struggling breath, Jesus replied that the criminal would indeed experience paradise. And then he commended his spirit to God and died. The skies turn black. All have abandoned him apart from the faithful women and his disciple John. Has the light of the world been extinguished?